Hello, I'm Andrew Jupin. Eric Siska. Steven Zadak. And we hate movies. Welcome to the program. Thank you for tuning in, as always, to We Hate Movies on the Sideshow Network. This week, we're talking about a movie that I saw twice in theaters, had the soundtrack on CD. I think there was a t-shirt involved. It's 1996's Space Jam, the Michael Jordan vehicle, directed, of course, by Joe Pitka, who I think the only he directed a bunch of music videos, and then the only other feature film he directed was that movie... Where it's before Space Jam, it's where what's it called, Steve? Where Richard Dreyfus has a gambling problem. He's like betting on horses, and he's like, "Oh, I, I want some money," and then oh, gets addicted to gambling. That's the Richard Dreyfus story. <laughs> Richard Dreyfus in the Richard Dreyfus. Is that Pritzy's Honor? No, it's not Pritzy's Honor. Uh, uh, I think Lost Jack Nicholson's. No, I don't know. I'll, I'll think of it at some point. But anyway, Joe Pitka directed this cartoon human hybrid of a movie. Uh, that makes Roger Rabbit look like Citizen Kane. I mean, Roger Rabbit's a good-ass movie. Absolutely. This movie's a piece of shit. If anyone is unfamiliar with this movie, and this was a massive movie. Sure. Uh, so much so that the website is still online to this day, which was always a fun thing to I, pull up. I think it's sentient. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's definitely... I think Ultron was originally made up <laughs> of, the, of the fucking Space Jam website. <laughs> But Steve, if if you had to say to somebody, "There's this movie Space Jam," and they went, "Say what?" How would you how would you qualify that that statement? Uh, Michael Jordan, in his very short uh, bas- baseball heyday, right, uh, gets pulled down to hell by the Looney Tunes, mm-hmm. who are tell who are <laughs> being held hostage by aliens that want to take them to an alien theme park world. The only way to settle this is with a basketball game, which they do. Oh yeah! You know, <laughs> oh boy, does it get settled? Sometimes you just gotta you gotta resort to hoops. <laughs> a lot of things in life sometimes comes down to a game of hoops. Is there some major thing that they settle via basketball in White Men Can't Jump? Everything. Yeah. Right. Well, like Woody Harrelson just keeps gambling and gambling, <laughs> not unlike Michael Jordan, and he gets like the shit kicked out of him a couple of times. Does and, Woody Harrelson gamble his way right out of basketball like Michael did? He kind of. Well, he, him, and Wesley Snipes win that cool two on two tournament. Yep. And he's like, "Dude, I'll gamble you my half of the money that I could dunk." And like Wesley Snipes is like, "No, man, the title of the movie." And he's like, "No, no, 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 I can dunk." And Titles I, be damned. I, I'm Duncan. <laughs> now, of course, if you're uh, unfamiliar, this is also the movie that gave us one of the greatest soundtracks of the 1990s. And this movie Did gets it? right into it with, uh, with I Believe I Can Fly, the R. Kelly song. Yeesh. Plays three times in this movie. It's disgusting. Mm-hmm, I mean, yeah. in this song, everywhere in the late 90s, I mean, this song... It was all over the place. Oh, yeah. and radio stations that didn't play contemporary R and B were playing that song. Yeah, try, try. You know what, folks at home, try to take a walk around a mall in nineteen ninety eight or seven. Yep, absolutely. Try go to go to a, it. try to go to a graduation ceremony at all and not hear that song. <laughs> right, graduation yeah. ceremony, sixth grade dances. I'm sure some weddings probably had it. Right. Oh, Do I'm you sure. think there's anyone out there? That had I Believe I Can Fly as their wedding first dance. It's a weird song because it's an inspirational song. It's not a romantic song. No. But it fills you with hope, I guess. But also, I'm not looking to be inspired by the Looney Tunes. Or R. Kelly, for that matter. Absolutely not. (laughs) I don't need him inspiring anything. So if 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 that was your first wedding dance... And did you get divorced? <laughs> please, yeah, that that was my fault. Yeah, question. please write into the mailbag. We all hate movies at gmail dot com. So we start with with Lil Michael Jordan. Oh yeah, because I believe I can fly. It's Michael Jordan. He's outside in the backyard. Lil Michael Jordan shooting hoops, and his dad comes out. You know, not his real dad. <laughs> Uh, just some guy playing his dad. And this is also a, a a kid playing young Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. It's not Michael Jordan shrunk down. No. I should be clear about yes. that. There wasn't a shrink ray involved. 
But it's just like, you know, he's out there and he's just like shooting hoops and his dad's like, what are you doing out here, Michael? And he's like, oh, I'm just, I can't sleep, Pop. You know, I'm just shooting some hoops and whatever. And the dad, like, really kind of cuts this kid down because he's like, Michael, what do you want to do with basketball? And he's like, I want to go to North Carolina and play basketball. Then I want to be in the NBA. Then I want to go make a shitty movie with the Looney Tunes. (laughs) Well, he's like, all right, you can go to sleep when you miss, which is also like there's must be some weird training regiment going on here. Absolutely. To create a super Jordan. (laughs) (laughs) This is the lab. (laughs) Yes, exactly. It's like not unlike uh, the age of Ultron. It's Black Widow. He had to like kill some dude. Oh, yeah. They put a Michael Jordan's dad put a bag over somebody's head. Michael Jordan had to murder him. (laughs) And then we cut to this super cut montage of all of like. Him being awesome at basketball. Oh, it's and it's, you know, Michael Jordan through the ages playing in North Carolina, yep. you know, him on the Bulls, him at the Olympics, just kicking ass in all sorts of basketball jerseys. You know what you don't see him do? Study at the Stellar Adler Acting Studio. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see him working with Chaz Palminteri on monologues. <laughs> you know what? That's because not only was footage unavailable, <laughs> footage was impossible. <laughs> Dude, he is... I think the worst athlete actor we've ever seen. Mm -mm -mm. You don't think so? It's Larry Bird. Larry Bird in this movie. Yeah. mm, Yeah. That's, that's, but he's a leading man. Yeah. Larry Bird has never carried a movie that I know of. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Well, I'm trying to think, you know, I mean, by the way, I think the best athlete actor is possibly Peyton Manning. Just with comedic timing, really? all of that. You know, though, he it's only commercials. I got to see him in a movie. I got to well, see no, him he, talking to Bugs Bunny to see how that, could, that you goes. Know what, for him to be a good actor, I got to see him play someone else other than Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I see him in a commercial, <laughs> it's just Forrest Gump. Yeah, actually, you know what? And you look fantastic when your scene partner's that asshole Papa John Shatter. <laughs> You're totally right. You got to go up with a titan like Bugs Bunny (laughs) to really get an accurate evaluation. They should do a new one for football. Um, uh, What would Space Jam football be called? I don't know. Space Blitz? The XFL? (laughs) The XFL. (laughs) Well, I think it would be the LTFL, right? Yeah, Looney Tunes Football League. Oh, yeah. that's. And then Lawrence Taylor's got a cameo like, I thought this was the LT. Oh, I get it. He just walks (laughs) off stage. Bye, everybody. I'll go back into my planet now. (laughs) <laughs> Speaking of wasting money on things you earn playing sports, Lawrence Taylor. Uh, was I going to say something, something about him being terrible? Oh, another like kind of good-ish actor. Doesn't um, the great one have a cameo in one of those Mighty Ducks movies? I don't remember. I think Gretzky's in one of those. And they're like, oh, my God, it's Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> and even him just being like, hi, kids. That's better than all the acting Michael Jordan's doing in this movie. I mean, my- Shaquille O'Neal better actor than michael jordan by far i think if we're talking about (laughs) athletes who have had movies yeah i think it's got to be shaquille o'neal yeah who is yeah not surprisingly but very much noticeably absent from this movie yes because this is 1996 he's still on the magic at this point yes and he's a superstar Mm -hmm. he's an absolute nba superstar by 1996 they play the knicks play are no no, they're playing the Suns at the beginning of the movie. That's where you get so, Charles Barkley. Yes, I think they're playing the Magic at the end of the movie. Uh, the Bulls are playing the Magic, but they're not there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Also, no. Scottie Pippen, nowhere to be found. Scottie Pippen, isn't he seen but not heard? Oh, is it? That that was Michael Jordan's uh, slogan for Scottie Pippen. <laughs> Scottie Pippen should be seen, not heard. But also, like, you're leaving out <laughs> the most looney tuniest of the Chicago Bulls, Dennis Rodman. Yeah. yeah, that's absolutely true. Where was that cartoon character? That was pre-Rodman. He was on the oh, Spurs really? at the time. Oh, okay. Rodman was like 97, 98. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, so we just we just miss Rodman. Yeah. All right. I mean, he was around, but not he he should have been he should have been one of the the guys who got his uh, soul sucked out. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So there are these aliens that work for Danny DeVito alien uh, on, on a planet that's a, like a planet amusement park called Mo- Moron Island. Moron oh, Mountain. Yeah. Oh, Moron Mountain, excuse me. Moron Mountain. I see. So it's a planet that... Now, this is what's weird. is So Michael Jordan gives that press conference, and it's like, I'm glad 
My dad died before he saw me play baseball. Yes. And then we like tilt up to the heavens <laughs> and we go into space. And in this same universe, we're told mm-hmm. we transfer right. into cartoon land. Yep. And there's this uh, moron mountain planet. Well, they just look like cartoons because they're aliens. Right. And then uh, underground, there's a dimensional vortex to Looney Tunes cartoon land. Right. But. Are the aliens supposed to be cartoons or are they supposed to be aliens? They're drawn the exact same way. They do as the look cartoons. Yeah, they look exactly like cartoons. <laughs> really? But you never know. If it looks like a cartoon and talks like a cartoon, <laughs> guess what? The fucking cartoon. What, here, how many it, planets are inhabited by cartoons is the question. Yes, are there oh, certain wow. planets cartoon planets? That's a terrifying question to raise. Andrew, what would you do if first contact is, is, is breached on Earth uh-huh. and it's a bunch of cartoons that come out? <laughs> Well, like with any possible alien invasion, the first step is to shit my pants. Yeah, second step, buy erasers. <laughs> you know, and that's, to your point, Eric, Roger Rabbit had a really clean idea. It's like, look, yep. it's Hollywood. There's this one Hollywood studio. I don't know where these magical cartoon beings come from. Yep. Forget about it. But they're here. They actually, all those cartoons you're, you're watching are actually just movies we're making. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, and there are studios, they're actors, they live, they breathe, they die, they fuck. That's what these cartoons do, right? Post mortem fucking? <laughs> they're cartoons, they can never die. <laughs> Unless they get in the dip, which is another thing that this movie's missing. Oh man, everybody needs to dip. I want to dip all the terrible Looney Tunes in this, man. <laughs> all the shit voice acting that's going on, we'll get to it. And then you want to talk about 1996. And like a fat kid wet dream, a Steve Sadek fat kid wet dream. Yep. This movie's it. I loved basketball and I loved the Looney Tunes. I loved Absolutely. them both almost equally. And it's like, oh my God, my two favorite things are going together. But that's like a hamburger pizza. It's not very good. <laughs> Sounds delicious. <laughs> Probably terrible. Gonna make you throw up anyway. <laughs> this movie's making me fucking puke. I remember seeing it in theaters and thinking it was stupid. I was a little embarrassed when I saw this in theaters. Even even back then, like I was like, "Oh man, Space Jam!" Ah, oh, this is. Am I going through puberty? <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's, oh, it's just, just so stupid. I can't believe I saw this movie in theaters. <laughs> and you, and that is when the fat nerd Steve died. Well, he's still alive, <laughs> alive and well. You got to kill the boy, Steve. <laughs> Let the man be born. So Moron Mountain, it's going through a slump, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess there's yeah. not enough people in attendance. But so Moron Mountain's not the planet. There's a planet that houses an amusement park that's called Moron Mountain. I think it's all Moron Mountain. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's a planet or a space station that has moron things. Danny DeVito is voicing this big fat alien character that's constantly walking around in open toe sandals like my old Greek neighbor next door. You're just like, what is going on with that guy? I didn't even notice the open toe sandals. I just could see green feet. I thought those were shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got like little, like you know, little flip flop things on. But that's weird because he's a businessman. He's got a big old cigar. He looks like a bad Don Bluth drawing. <laughs> Look, at, they love to animate cigars in the '90s for some reason. I don't know what it is because, it, because you know why? Because cigars did not have the stigma that cigarettes got. Yeah, that's true. And they still don't. Yeah. They absolutely still don't. Because someone smoking a cigarette, you're like, that's going to kill you and everyone else around you. That's disgusting. And someone smoking a cigar, you're like, look at that fucking asshole. Or you're like, oh, different look stigmas. <laughs> look at that successful gentleman. Like, oh, look, yeah, yeah. I got to make a lot of money. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. And sometimes you're fucking Sylvester Stallone. That's how that works. <laughs> So Danny DeVito's like, hey, little aliens, we need a new attraction here. How about the Looney Tunes? Which, wait, what? How are you aware of Earthbound Entertainment? He steps on a remote because he's like, we need something big, fantastic, amazing. And it's just like you close your eyes and picture Danny DeVito as the penguin. And he's just like, <laughs> and he steps on this remote control and a whole wall of TVs just plays the Looney Tunes like I'm at Six Flags Great Adventure. And I'm like, oh, wait, okay. Wait, to your point, where is this TV well, signal coming from? I think Absolutely. This is a signal broadcast into space back in the 50s or 60s. Oh, or I see. oh we brought it on ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like contact when they send back footage of Hitler. Yes. <laughs> These moron mountainers finally see what the Looney Tunes are and they go loony for the Looney Tunes. Uh, it's moron mountaineers. 
Oh, excuse me. What did I? Say? What did I? <laughs> I don't say? know more on mountainers. Oh, yeah, it's mountain never is, actually yeah. specified. You think in contact after that Hitler scene that's really jarring and weird? They had like a <laughs> cast meeting and they're like, "All right, guys, we can make one of two movies. <laughs> one is the movie we're making right now, where uh, at the end Jodie Foster's father David Morse shows up. And not much else happens. <laughs> two, Nazi aliens invasion." And yeah. like they, they had to go like show a hands and like Scarrett was for it. Garrett, Jake Busey was all about it. Jake Busey was definitely all about it. Oh man, space Hitlers sounds great. Just an army of space Hitlers. That would have been my fat kid wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> so Danny DeVito enlists four of, I guess, a group of five little aliens because he's got one little squeaker that's left behind. Okay, they're, they're best friends. Yeah, they're all best friends. I think he, I mean he's probably fucking that one. I think it is what we're led to believe. Excuse me? Yeah, why not? <laughs> all right. Open-toed sandals. And uh so he sends them to Earth and he's like go get me the Looney Tunes. <laughs> and you're like, "All right." Uh, yeah, and and we're on our way, I guess is the deal. Well, it would be funny if he was, they were like, "A oh, boss, those are cartoons." Like, "Wait, what do you mean got are we cartoons? <laughs> they look just like, wait, what am I? Oh, no. <laughs> then he passes out. <laughs> Blood starts coming out of his nose. <laughs> he can't comprehend his own existence. And in the middle, so we go back to uh, the Michael Jordan story. We're, at, we're on the baseball mound. Which is such a weird thing. Like, this movie, like, romanticizes. And, like, this is such a footnote in the Michael Jordan history. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. In retrospect, it's just so meaningless. The whole, like, it's meaningless. It's embarrassing. All it did was, like, cost the Bulls two championships. That's, that's, that's literally all that happened. He, yeah. No, he did honestly. This and he, that, that's it. But everything else is, like, nobody cared. Nobody really, like, the baseball thing, to, to their credit, like, I guess he'd already come back to basketball at this point. So they kind of make a, a bit of a joke of it. Like, yeah. He's shown to be really bad at baseball, which he was. He was terrible. Now, how was it just one more championship after he came back? No, no then they had another three-peat. They did. It was, so it was three and then three. Yes. So it was three. We took two years off. <laughs> yes, exactly. To fuck around in the outfield. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going. So it was another three after that. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This whole baseball thing is just, it's so bizarre. And they're just constantly talking about how terrible he is in baseball. Mm. To the point where, like, one of his children is like, you know your batting stance is shit, right? You know it's absolute <laughs> shit. And he's just like, what? what do you know about that little kid? And he's like, because I'm a little kid and I'm learning how to play baseball. <laughs> You're just an idiot that left a game due to gambling. Enter uh, Wayne Knight to this movie. Breath of fresh air, honestly. I love Wayne Knight. I do love Wayne Knight. It's yep. just embarrassing to watch him have to do all this. <sighs> yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, he plays Michael Jordan's publicist and the team owner of the Chicago Barons. Is that, that it? The, the, minor the Barons, league? yeah, yeah, yeah. The minor league uh, White Sox team is like, look, you have to go and make sure that Michael's happy. Do whatever you have to do to make sure Michael's happy. Well, and that's the that's the theme of this movie is let's all blow Michael Jordan, <laughs> yeah. right? And because like when we when we cut back, it's from... really space jams in your mouth. <laughs> Good gravy. I'm sorry, I mean, you're not wrong. That's what it felt like when we get back from Moron Mountain and he's at the plate. We're like we're we're treated to this hilarious uh, scene where. Uh, the catcher is telling him what the pitches are going to be because he just fucking loves Michael oh, Jordan yeah. so much. Thank you for signing that basketball. My kid thinks I'm a hero. That's the thing is Michael Jordan's not only the best at everything, he's also a great guy. And yep. there's not even one second in this movie that is the Michael Jordan story that is like ever tries to dispute that. He doesn't raise his voice. He doesn't say, what the fuck are you, Looney Tunes problem? Yeah, learn no. how to pass. Which you know is a lot of like, what the fuck is your problem, Scotty Pippen? He doesn't have a character in this. No, he's just well because he's trying so hard to not be the asshole that everybody knows Michael Jordan to be. Is he really? He's a notorious jerk. Yeah, he's and just mean to everybody. Oh wow, well, that I would respect him had I seen this. <laughs> well, I mean, I would love a movie where it's kind of like a like a Christmas Carol situation or something, <laughs> right? Where <laughs> no, gets, you're you're going to be visited by three basketball ghosts. Yeah, exactly. Or three Looney Tunes. You get visited <laughs> by three Looney Tunes, and they teach him to not be a total asshole. Oh yeah. They teach him that gambling on your own sport is wrong. <laughs> you should treat. Uh, you know, oh, normos man. with just as much respect as you demand from them. So two Looney Tunes ghosts and the ghost of Pete Rose. 
<laughs> and Pete Rose is just dead. And they're like, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. When can I get let back into a baseball stadium? You want me to sign that? It's $100. <laughs> yeah. You want me to sign that? That's $100. But you're totally right, though. If anyone's going to teach Michael Jordan a lesson about gambling... Fucking poor Pete Rose, man. <laughs> Can we all just get over the Pete Rose thing? It's yeah, fine. Let I him mean, back in. You know Who what? Cares? He's going to drop dead, and then they'll be like, reinstated into Major League Baseball. If A-Rod can be shooting up every fucking game, getting it all into his veins, <laughs> yeah. and then gets caught, kicked out, and then can come back to, oh, shoot a little more. <laughs> Well, then yeah. why not let Pete Rose If in? A-Rod can have the audacity to date Madonna, <laughs> Pete Rose can come back to baseball. I just feel like I would much rather celebrate people that are, you know, actually, you know, using competition outside of sports on sports like gambling, <laughs> as opposed to turning themselves into monsters, <laughs> which is unfair. Right, juicing. It's an, it's an unfair advantage to monster yourself up like A-Rod did. A Jose yeah. Canseco cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Monsterod. Monsterod. Oh, man. By the way, I apologize to, I mean, like, you've, you, if you've been listening to the show for a long enough time, you realize we know a little bit about sports, and this is like the episode, it's all kind of coming out. Yeah. I'm sure some of you have turned it off, and that's fine. <laughs> well, you know, you know st- just keep with it, because I don't know anything. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to get to the Looney Tunes real soon. Because that's the weird thing, is the Looney Tunes... It should be a Looney Tunes movie because yep. it, it had been a long time yeah. for a Looney Tunes movie. They they made a little cameo in Roger Rabbit. That's about it. Yes. I went to see the Looney Tunes. Not really Michael Jordan's struggle to act. Well, that's, that's the other thing, right? Like, like you, Steve, and like Eric, but he didn't follow sports. But, like, we grew up in New York. Like, yeah. you're a Knicks fan. I don't give a fuck about Michael Jordan. I never did. Yeah. I never did. Like, I get it. Six championships. It's fantastic. You're the best basketball player ever, and that's awesome. But you know who I will always love over you? Fucking Patrick goddamn Ewing, who's a class act. He deserves to be a head coach in the NBA. And enough is enough already. Where's Patrick Ewing's space jam? <laughs> that would be nine minutes long. <laughs> If they can have a side direct to DVD movie of those two dummies from Get Smart, yeah, Harry and Lloyd or whatever, <laughs> the scientists yeah, got their own little right. spin-off movie. I want a Pat a, a, a Patrick Ewing Space Jam spin-off where it's just him dealing with having his basketball abilities taken away cuz you know the city turned on him. Oh dude, and instead of Bill Murray, you get Brian Doyle Murray. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that sounds great. And Brian Doyle Murray as the team doctor and instead of wayne knight you get wayne knight (laughs) (laughs) but i mean mean, new yorkers turn on sports icons fast sure sure, sure. i mean they'd be shitting all over him that's the whole movie right there is patrick ewing having to deal with the city of new york hating his guts uh another thing about michael jordan about the glorification of michael jordan in this movie is they show him having this like normal suburb it's a nice house but it's like a normal suburban home like oh it's yeah the house of somebody that owns like three pizzerias and it's doing really good <laughs> yeah. well mother i don't know if we should franchise it just yet but i think three is pretty sharp <laughs> exactly like a nice yeah. normal well-to-do guy michael jordan lived in a golden palace <laughs> Since, yeah. like, 1992, yeah. yep. it was, like, a golden palace. Absolutely. There is not one golden toilet in that farmhouse, mm-hmm. yes. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> and what's amazing is you feel bad for poor Wayne Knight because Wayne Knight has to give him a ride home from the baseball stadium <laughs> one day, which, whatever, you're Michael Jordan. You got a dude full-time driving you mm-hmm. around. Yes, you know? exactly. So my, Wayne Knight's got to pull Michael Jordan up to this house in his shitbox car, and Wayne Knight's like, oh, my God, look at this house, Mr. Jordan. Oh, it's fantastic. And you're just like, none of this is real. <laughs> like, none of this. I don't know if you have three kids like this. He's married to the woman who's the wife in Spawn. That's not real. Oh, man. I'm now imagining, like, Al Simmons in, in like, hobo garb. It's just like, <laughs> oh, no. My wife's married to Michael Jordan now. <laughs> Clown, you got to help me. She'll never dump me for Michael Jordan. I dump the Air Jordan. <laughs> Fucking John Leguizamo in that movie. See the oh. back catalog on whmpodcast.com for our episode on that wretched film Spawn. So there's also cartoons in this movie, we come to find out. This is the weirdest part. <laughs> so, like, 
um, we go to Toontown or Looney, the, what they call Looney Toontown because they can't be bothered <laughs> to actually improve on the Roger Rabbit formula. And I am sick and tired of these cartoons saying Looney Tunes in this movie. It's like we as the Looney Tunes, we need to have a Looney Tunes union meeting. Yep. And also, I don't think it happened a lot where like bugs would be like, hey, Elmer Fudd. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, there's a guy that's trying to shoot me in the face and I'm going to mess with him. Yep. It wasn't this like direct addressing character to characters, you know. Yeah. We're not using, you know, uh, formal names here. But what's also crazy, too, is like these kids are watching the Looney Tunes. Michael oh, Jordan's right. kids are watching the Looney Tunes when all the <laughs> shit starts going down and everyone just leaves the the tv it's just like so they get a still shot of the desert but they don't get the road runner so it's like wait a second it's Was actually this an alive feed the whole time <laughs> it's one of my favorite parts of the movie because what they're watching initially is like a bunch of sports reports about how he's terrible at baseball and he's just like what are you kids watching this for how about yeah looney tunes that'll do and yeah it's a weird thing where it's like it's a classic, you know, Roadrunner Wiley e. Coyote bit. And you're like, all right, this is the best thing Looney Tunes did. This is great. And you're watching it. You're enjoying it. And then fucking Porky Pig comes out of nowhere. And he's like, Eba Beep, stop it, everybody. We have to have a union meeting. And Wiley e. Coyote is like, well, all right. Thank you for letting me know, Porky Pig. Thank you so much. Well, and they walk I, off. as a Looney Tune, am required at a meeting. Goodbye, kids. The, you know, the Roadrunner stands up. He's like, thank you for letting me know. And, like, they walk off. And, yeah, Eric, it's just like this. It's the desert road. And yeah. the kids are just like, wait, what? But it's a weird thing, and we were joking about this before we went on the air. Like, are these Looney Tunes damned to repeat these same bits for 50 years? Well, we come to learn that they actually are in hell. <laughs> they are they are they exist in a in a in a portal under the earth's surface. Yeah. So I think so yes. So weird. You it's go like, through a Warner Brothers logo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that to, that is yeah, it's guarded by the Warner Brothers shield. So somehow Warner Brothers makes money. On these goblins that live beneath <laughs> the earth. Jack it, Warner, man, invented hell. You know he's in hell. Jack Warner is definitely in hell oh, right yeah, now. Oh, yeah, of course. He's running the show, probably. <laughs> Jack Warner is like the devil. Like It's kind of like the Castro situation in Cuba right now. Like, Satan stepped down and, like, Jack Warner just <laughs> <laughs> took his seat on the throne. That's quite an analogy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Thank you. So the <laughs> monsters come to the Looney Tune town. They're like, hey, guess what? We, we're going to turn you into our slaves up on Monster Mountain. Can we talk about the word slave? Yeah, because we're not just saying that being jerks on the internet. This is a real <laughs> thing that happens throughout the movie. It's just slave, slave, s slave, slave, slave in this. There's two ways. There's two kinds of slaves in this world. And neither of which should be in a Looney Tunes movie. <laughs> one is the biggest tragedy in American history. And the other one's people who like to pay people to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> and that's <laughs> neither of which are okay for a Looney Tunes cartoon. Because they're like, that's a slave. And, and then Danny DeVito and his buddies are slavers. And you're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Come on, Looney Tunes. It's like when the Simpsons Family Guy crossover happened and they make the rape joke. And yeah. how we said, like, rape should not be in the Simpsons yep. world. Well, fucking slavery is certainly not a part of the Looney Tunes universe. And it's just like, oh, my God, they're going to turn us into slaves. They want us to be their slaves. When they have this town hall meeting in Looney Tuneville, yeah. the sign outside, much like a Simpsons sign gag, is like, meeting tonight. We're possibly slaves. <laughs> I thought there was a clear distinction that Disney gets the slavery material. <laughs> Right, because the Song of the South and whatnot? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. where it belongs. Let Donald figure that puzzle out. <laughs> it's not a Daffy issue. No, like it's a... not a Daffy issue. Daffy, I don't know, Holocaust. <laughs> now, we're talking about Daffy, so let's talk about what is the worst part of this movie that doesn't have anything to do with slavery, and that is the voice acting. Yep. This is So we're talking like... We're making this movie like 40 years, 
35 years after these original shorts. Sure. Right? Maybe even a little longer, some of them. Mel Blanc died in the 80s, I want to say. So, I mean, these are... It's like the dudes now on, like, Muppets. Yeah. And Sesame Street and all that. Like, we're getting these second-generation voices. And sometimes this stuff works. Like, I think the Muppets have most of those voices figured out. Yeah. Like, uh, the, the trailer for the new TV show, which I am excited about on ABC... Most of those Muppets sound okay. Fozzie's a little wonky still. Yeah. But the Looney Tunes voices In are, Space Jam specifically. Yes, in Space Jam specifically. And I should mention, I never saw the Steve Martin, Brendan Fraser, mm-hmm. Dharma and Greg movie. <laughs> or What's the, her name? Uh, Jenna Elfman. Yes. I never or saw that new, movie. Or the new cartoon that people always say, hey, hey, it's pretty good. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's like when people are like, you know what, man? Like, Andrew, listen, I know you really, truly love Batman, the animated series. But you know what's great? Honestly, some of these new Batman cartoons they're putting out. And I'm like, oh, yeah, trusted source. Okay, I'll check it out. And it's garbage. I have to imagine that's what's going on with this Looney Tunes show. You show me a fucking rabbit with a cell phone, I'm not tuning in. Yeah, I watched like 13 minutes of it once at Bugs Bunny. (laughs) 13 minutes. Bugs Bunny was trying to get a gym membership. I was like, you know what, guys? (laughs) Get the fuck out of here. I'm not in the mood for what, it. Was he overweight? <laughs> no, it's just, it's 2010. You got to join a gym. Oh, man. It's like how poor Cookie Monster can't even have cookies anymore. We're just killing everything. <laughs> killing everything that was entertaining. Fucking Cookie Monster can't <laughs> eat cookies. So killing everything that's entertaining. Back to Space Jam. <laughs> yeah. Daffy Duck's voice, I think, is the worst out of all of them. It is. It's, it's a train wreck. It's like such a bad... And it, I, I love Daffy Duck. I feel like I might be alone in this room as a Daffy Duck fan. I was a Bugs guy. I'm a Marvin the Martian fan. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Can I tell you my Marvin the Martian story? You met him once? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I kind of met him in the most terrifying way possible. Okay. So when I was a kid, um, I was like a little too old for this. But, you know, three kids, you got to save up money, right? We finally do the big vacation to Disney World. Sure. And it's a split vacation. It's four days in Disney World, four days on the Big Red Boat. And the Big Red Boat oh, was all the... I thought you were going to say the Big Red Planet, Mars. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm getting there. So we're on the Big Red Boat. It's the last half of this vacation. And the Big Red Boat was like, it was it was a Warner Brothers thing. Like, all the Warner Brothers characters fucked around on it. It was a Warner Brothers thing? I don't know. I mean, the Warner Brothers characters were all over Okay. It. So it's like, you know how Disney World, they yeah, dance yeah, around yeah, in yeah. suits? It was the same thing on the Big Red Boat, but with, like, Bugs Bunny, Daffy, they're all there and everything, right? So I go to get on this elevator in the boat one night. It was, like, after dinner, and I'm going up to the cabin to get something and then go. I mean, here's the thing why Andrew Jupin loves a good cruise. Fucking 24-7 all-you-can-eat buffet. Sure. So I was like, I'm leaving one buffet and going to another one. (laughs) Better go up to my room and get some Imodium AD in between. Oh, God. So I get in this. I buzz the elevator, right? This door opens, and I don't know if I was where I shouldn't have been or he was where he shouldn't have been, but these elevator doors open, and there is Marvin the Martian holding his own head in his hands while this dude is just like, ah. And he had a human head? It's the ads the little it's the dude the playing Marvin the Martian. Okay, just just specify. And he's holding the costume's head in his like it would also it. be terrifying to see a headless Marvin the Martian. No, you could the, the guy's head was popping up through the costume and he's looking at me like I might be fucking fired. <laughs> and it was just a weird like I didn't get on the elevator like a, I won't tell if you won't kind of a thing <laughs> and the door just closed and then for the rest of the cruise like I would see Marvin the Martian running around the ship and I'd be like, I wonder if that's the same guy that fucked up on the elevator. You make the face of Shelley Duvall in The Shining when she <laughs> sees that dog <laughs> blowing that guy. <laughs> it was just, it was such, even the, I was 16 when we went on this cruise, so I understand that it's a person in a suit yeah. and I was still just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it was so strange. But yeah, I mean, I was a bug, but Daffy is terrible. It's the worst. It's it's really bad. So their idea is, okay, these these aliens are really, really tiny. How do we... They're challenging us to some sort of a duel. And if they win, if we win, they go away. If they, if they win, we become their slaves. 
So us, us, us slaves. And they're really short. So what are really what can we beat them at? Ooh, basketball's really hot <laughs> right now. Also, we also get a Bugs Bunny patent spoof. And boy, do I hate when anyone spoofs patent. Dude, what are we even doing with patent spoofs? And I feel like there's so many. Patton is a thing that, and of course, we're talking about specifically Patton giving the speech in front of the American right. flag. Or also, you might remember it from Superman 3 and everything else that spoofs <laughs> this scene. Exactly. And it's just like, no one is seeing that movie. You know what I mean? Like kids. Yeah, they, they don't know what it is. They don't get it. You Honestly, know? it turned me off of Patton for years. And when I finally watched it, I was like, this is great. Patton's a great movie. It it's is a great probably movie. George C. Scott's best movie. But you know what has never been funny? Any scene making fun or light of Patton. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And I'm looking at you, Richard Pryor in Superman 3. That shit's just as wretched. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's like, well, they're nice and tiny. So, okay, you know. We'll obviously challenge them to basketball. And then they go, I, they have the idea, like, we'll go up to Earth. The aliens do. Yes. We'll go up to Earth and steal the talent of, like, somehow these aliens also know that the NBA exists. Sure. They know if they travel north from hell, they'll get to the surface of the Earth. And there will be this Real group people. of people playing basketball. And so they go around and they take the souls of several people, including my favorite basketball player, Char uh, uh, Patrick Ewing. Charles Barkley's also involved. Larry Johnson, Muggsy Bogues, and weirdly, Sean Bradley, who is terrible at basketball, but he's bit, like the tallest one. So they're like, oh, that must mean he's really good. Well, because I feel like they wanted to find basket and now, and But this is a question. So I don't know if this is true or not. What the I answer to, to your question is Chris Mullen. If you wanted a white, a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I was going to... Or John Stockton? Yeah, John Stockton also. Well, so... But my question was, because these... Oh, man. When they take the energy or the talent of these basketball players and put them inside the aliens, they grow into the monsters. Sure. The big monsters that they have to play. And now, these alien monsters kind of resemble their basketball counterparts. So my question is... Yeah. Are we drawing the monsters first and uh, figuring out which players look most <laughs> like them? Possible. Or are we getting the players who will agree to do this dumb movie and then drawing them? That's a because good Because this white guy looks exactly like his... The, Sean Bradley. Yeah. Looks exactly like his counterpart. Yes. The cartoon counterpart. Yes. So it's either the cartoon is drawn to look like Sean Bradley and they were like, oh, Jesus, you drew that one like that? Who does he... You know, fuck, he looks like Sean Bradley. <laughs> well, he can get him for cheap, I guess. <laughs> Because why? It doesn't make any sense. And you're telling me, because Larry Bird is all over this movie. Yeah. You're telling me that you couldn't go inside Larry Bird and take his basketball talent? Because the talent's not gone. He just got old. Yeah, his bad knees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if the talent is still there, if he had better knees, if he was a younger man, take the talent from Larry Bird. It'd be fun. It's fun. <laughs> Can we talk about the first stealing scene? Because basically... They do a, the, a a tried and true animation trick where they're in a big trench coat. All these little aliens, and they go to <laughs> oh, Madison yeah. Square Garden, and he's they're sitting next to Dan Castanella and Pat Patricia Heaton. Yes, and there's like a weird jerk off jer joke because it's oh like, yeah, it's a big guy in a trench coat. He's all hunched over because he's a, a cart a series of cartoons under there. It's a real life trench coat and yeah. hat with yes. drawn cartoons inside it, and right. like he's like hunched over, and Patricia Heaton's like. Ew, <laughs> like that only means he's <laughs> masturbating. Or, well, or she's suspecting he's a ninja turtle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, a ninja turtle sitting next oh, to me. God. Oh, coming up here in raw sewage. <laughs> How the hell did this ninja turtle get second row? <laughs> well, that's it's amazing because they're playing like a yuppie couple. Yeah. And Patricia Heaton's like, oh, honey, I thought you said you were going to get better seats than this. And Dan Costello and that is like, shut up and watch the game, Marge. <laughs> And like, but they weirdly like <laughs> slime onto the floor. Which yeah, is they turn into gooblins. Uh, <laughs> My thing about the jerking off, man, it's the mid nineties. You're at the garden. Someone's <laughs> jerking off in a trench coat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just, it was New York pre nine eleven, yeah. man. There's at any one time fifty people doing this. <laughs> Fifty people. Yeah, yeah. Well, they used to pack the garden back in those days. 
It was it was two years after that ninety four Nick team. Yeah. People still had the faith. Yeah, it was, you're right. It was that. You know, you're in Penn Station practically. Everyone's oh jerking God. off. Of Someone, everyone, everyone listening at home, look at your watch right now. Someone's jerking off at Penn Station. <laughs> yeah, Welcome to New York. It's just perpetual, man. <laughs> Twenty four forever. They chain shifts like those Looney Tunes sheepdogs. <laughs> Sam, Ralph, jerk, 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 jerk. So they suck all this stuff into a basketball. They take all the aforementioned uh, basketball players. God, whatever, Space Jam. And, like, you know, this is calling upon more bad acting from (laughs) Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing. And they're all, like, trying to pretend they're bad at basketball. And, like, what's going on? Yeah, which is, like, they can't pretend that they're bad at basketball because they're such bad actors. So they have to lose all physical coordination. Mm. Like... Like, Charles Barkley can barely walk once his basketball (laughs) talent is taken away. Come on. And this is what causes, like, some panic in the NBA, which is a weird, like, they think a disease is going around. Yes, they think they have AIDS. (laughs) Guys, too many people have jerked (laughs) off at Madison Square Garden. The players have been affected. It's airborne at this point. (laughs) We got to put that tent over it like Breaking Bad. The whole garden's contaminated. There's like black and white pictures of that trench coated figure. Like <laughs> that we think is the guy that jerked off too much. <laughs> He's the guy that ruined it for everybody else. Jerking off at the garden. Uh, that's it. New rule. No one can jerk off at the garden. Aww. Yeah. And that's how the Knicks lost attendance. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it wasn't happened. being the worst team in the NBA last year. Um, And there's this weird thing like, Basketball basically stops. You get a nice Vladi Divops ca- cameo, which is terrible. Oh, when he's... Oh, I wrote it down what his line is because it's the worst. Do you remember it, Steve? Uh, he goes... Uh, it's like a press conference and he's, they're like, what do you think about closing down the NBA? And he's like, yes, virus going around. It's like invasion of body snatcher. <laughs> Everybody was clamoring for his cameo. Um, So we're, we're closing down the NBA. Michael Jordan sucked into the seventh circle of hell. Because they need help. Yep. The Looney Tunes decide that they need help. Somehow the Looney Tunes know who Michael Jordan is. I think it's because Bugs Bunny did those commercials with him. Him and Marvin the Martian were getting together. They're like, you know who we could call upon? He always said if we ever needed anything, you know, he was a real asshole on the set of those fucking Nike commercials. The best thing is uh, there's this awful scene where um, Wayne Knight break goes into michael jordan's hotel room oh, and michael yeah. jordan who's in peak physical condition is just sitting around eating mcdonald's it's that a whole should be illegal it's a whole ton of mcdonald's yeah and, and just sitting down like right before bed eating a big mac and it's like oh man can't wait to have this body tomorrow after i do this well you oh, know boy, what that's probably uh... why he was terrible at baseball he's eating all that mcdonald's <laughs> what kind of, this is the message you're selling to children oh basically. absolutely like yeah. you want to be like mike yeah Better get as big as Wayne Knight. (laughs) And also the other thing about that, he is in like a grody ass hotel room, (laughs) you know, that Michael Jordan would never have slept in. He's at the Lincoln Motor Inn out by LaGuardia. (laughs) But it's, it's a bullshit joke here too. And Wayne Knight comes in and he's like, Hey Mike, let me know if you need anything. If you need McDonald's or Nike or a Gatorade or Hanes. And I'm like, you fucking dicks. You dicks. <laughs> it's one of those jokes that that's a joke, but it's also like, just so you know, all all these corporate interests are right here. Bye. Yeah, and you know, it's not funny like how Wayne's World did it. Yes. That's one of the most amazing things, yeah. the bits about selling out. Like, sure, new print, little, yellow, different. That's, yeah. I mean, that's so great. This is just like, yeah, we're cramming all this in. It's contractually obligated. <laughs> Come this, on. This is the easiest way to do it in a 71-minute movie. So there you go. <laughs> so then he's at, like, he's golfing with Larry Bird and Bill Murray. <laughs> like you <he> would. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, w- listen, this is an end-of-your-rope pre-Wes Anderson Bill Murray. Yep. This is, like, man who knew too little Bill Murray. Yep. Uh, quick change bill murray well I which will, one was quick change it's him and randy quaid and they rob a bank no. is danny glover in that movie not that i know of. what's the movie it's him and dennis Qua- oh i'm thinking of switchback yeah <laughs> yes bill what, murray's what, not in that at now, all you, okay you guys hate this era of bill murray but i honestly think there's some 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 
gems here in the rough here. Okay, now. such I'm willing to listen. Like what? Ed Wood. I mean, yes. it's a small role, but he's okay. great in it. I think Kingpin is is good. His now, role yeah. is Big Ernie McCracken. Same year as Space Jam. Right, and I had said I have to return to to Kingpin. I have not seen it. You know, in almost 15 years. He's very funny in Kingpin. Uh-huh. But I think this was a, a a a shift in the Bill Murray where he saw him. He had to wear an umbrella hat in this scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he is just hucking and hucking all over the this place. Is, it's, it's him just doing like, oh, it's sort of like I'm doing Caddyshack again, kind of. Not I mean, really. that's when we're introduced to him. He's talking to the ball. He's about to tee off. Yeah, he's, yeah he's it's wearing, very Caddyshack. Yeah, yeah he's, he's wearing boots and he's playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you can't say, you know, that he's not thanking the Lord for Wes Anderson oh, every day. I'm not saying he isn't. <laughs> yeah. And Larry Bird's in this scene, who I think is only in this scene to make Michael Jordan look a little better. You know what I mean? But <laughs> he makes him look like Marlon fucking Brando in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Larry Bird acting is like if one of those Easter Island statues came to life and started flapping its little rock gums. That's had, what we're dealing with. I think they had to fire a gun at the beginning and end of every scene <laughs> to let him know when to do things. <laughs> And it's just like, you know what, Larry Bird, I am sure in your, I'm not, I'm not knocking his basketball career at all. Sure. Like your prestigious, prestigious basketball career. One of the best basketball players of all time. You've talked some shit to Michael Jordan. Oh, for sure. Okay. So it's like, just think about all those times on the court. You talk shit to Michael Jordan (laughs) and just transfer that shit talk into on the golf course. That's all you have to do in the scene. And instead he's like. About another thing, Michael. About the about the big about about, and his mouth just falls off his face. And you're like, "What happened?" Larry Bird's mouth fell off. <laughs> oh, he's a Looney Tune. <laughs> Michael Jordan wishes he was acting against the Looney Tune in this. <laughs> so he, you know, he goes into the fucking Looney Tunes world. He gets sucked sucked through a a golf hole. And after the Looney Tunes engineer a totally fake hole in one. Yes. Yeah. I hope that's not getting counted on the scorecard. Oh, it got counted. What's amazing is he gets sucked into this hole and Larry Bird and Bill Murray are like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Like get in the golf cart and drive off. And Wayne Knight starts like digging a hole to try to find him. <laughs> well, because he's going to, he's going to take the heat for it, it. It seems. Well, that's, I mean, the other thing is if he doesn't find him, he'll never be able to blow Michael Jordan ever again. <laughs> and this character loves Michael Jordan. He needs his space jam. <laughs> <laughs> So Bugs Bunny, you know, proposes like, <laughs> what? He, I don't know. He proposes that, you know, to help them play basketball. Right. And this is where Michael Jordan says that he's a baseball player now. And, and they all laugh in his yeah, fucking face. Bugs Bunny says, yeah, right. And I'm a Chinese jet pilot. <laughs> does no, he, he say, does not. Does he no, say oh, that? I took my note wrong. No, he says, um, <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm a Shakespearean actor. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might have been from Army of Darkness. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But, and then Michael Jordan just goes, what does a Shakespearean actor mean? Am I a Shakespearean actor? Yeah. And then all the cartoons laugh at him again. Because his acting is so heinous. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just, we don't really get the rules of this Looney Tune world. Like, Well, we're forgetting we're cartoons at yeah. some point, which is yes. annoying. Yes, it is. Like, we're having a town hall meeting. Yeah. <laughs> cartoons yes. don't have town hall meetings. <laughs> and if there's a town hall, by the way, who's the mayor? Is it Bugs? Yeah, of course. He's the king of all Looney Tunes, really? apparently. Or is it Mayor McCheese? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that reminds me, by the way. You see that they've redone the Hamburglar? Yes. yes. He's a hunk. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, right, man. If you were... Show me a real guy that likes to steal hamburgers. I'll show you a fucking 500-pound behemoth. <laughs> I mean, speaking of Wayne Knight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love him. Cast Wayne Knight as the new Hamburglar. Not sure. this beefcake. You know what? Because I, he can't be eating all those beefcakes. I don't need a fucking Hamburglar with a great metabolism. No. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm eating McDonald's because I hate myself. <laughs> That's the new slogan. I look like garbage and I hate myself. Ba da ba ba ba. I'm a fat pig. Now it's okay. It's okay to like McDonald's on occasion. I remember, love McDonald's. I remember, just can't eat it because I feel like garbage. Yes. 
a balanced diet once in a while, kids. Sure, it's a treat. We, we this is a public service. It's a sometimes food, just like poor fucking Cookie Monster has to treat cookies now. <laughs> Like it's sometimes exactly, food. exactly. Poor bastard, man, just living your life between the sometimes, you know, <laughs> just between What's the, the point, ticks of that sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Cookie monster, like feeling a razor's edge, <laughs> sitting in the bathtub. <laughs> A yeah. Tom Petty albums on. Oh yeah, dude, we've all been there. Mary Jane's Last Dance. I had cookies yesterday. <laughs> this is the worst part of my week. I have the don't... longest I have between <laughs> eating cookies. The day after cookie is the worst day. I don't know why I even ate cookies yesterday. He's precariously dangling a plugged in toaster <laughs> over the tub. He puts his head in the tub and starts screaming into the water. <laughs> Speaking of Wes Anderson, needle in the hay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's coming on. Cookie Monster's changing the track over. He shaves his beard. <laughs> if I, I can't have cookie and sleep with my sister, <laughs> I kill self. <laughs> oh, so he's dead. And we're at this time is when the Looney Tunes decide to spit shine the this basketball This I almost court. threw right up. Yeah, it's, it's spit, disgusting. It's spit so disgusts gross. me. They're just all hawking loogies. All over the floor. Again, this is a children's movie. Don't encourage spitting. Well, so they go into the, the Looney Tunes town gymnasium. And they're just like, hey, Michael Jordan's like, this place is a dump. We can't play basketball here. And they're like, oh, hey, give us a second. And all these cartoons are just hawking lugs all over the place. And then one of them runs, runs around with a little mop and cleans everything up. And it looks like a prestigious animated yeah, gymnasium. That's, oh, that's your Taz cameo. Yeah. Oh, Which also, why isn't Taz on the team? He is on the team, but he doesn't do anything. Oh, okay. He great. gets fucked up in two seconds, just like most of the team members. He does a speedball before the match. <laughs> yeah. This is during that. There was that Fox show, Tasmania, which was like a Tasmanian devil sitcom. Eesh. I watched a ton of Tasmania. Sure. And you know what? Wasn't great. Wasn't bad. Sure. It was wasn't fine. great. It was like the Eek the Cat era mm. of that Fox after school block, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But it was fine. They gave him a son, I think. Yeah. He's or there a... was like a lady devil or something. <laughs> you know, she's a lady because she's got a bow in her hair. I mean, that was it was the Ms. <laughs> Pac-Man motto. Speaking of, oh, we, we're about to flip that whole model over again. We're, <sighs> we're tired of just making female characters. That are just the regular male characters with a bow in their hair. Uh uh uh. Let's get some sexy bunnies in this cartoon movie. Yep. And now enter what is it? Lola Bunny. Lola Bunny. Yeah. And it's just this like sexified little cartoon. She has breasts. Like there's cleavage ish going on. Yep. Her ears are tied back with a scrunchie. It's insane. And this the sensual dialogue, and then like her tank top. Falling just below her <laughs> shoulder, her bunny shoulder, her bunny, her soft, wide breasts. Bunny shoulder. Yeah, she's got eyeliner on. Rabbits and... don't have breasts. <laughs> yeah, this one does. <laughs> well, I guess so. Like, so now she's a hybrid of some kind. Well, I mean, <laughs> Bugs has the uh, motor mouth of a human. Sure. Yeah, I guess so. The motor mouth. <laughs> so I guess, <laughs> ergo, if she doesn't have. Mm. Ergo, if she doesn't have the quick wits right. of Bugs Bunny, she's got to have uh, well something really. Uh, aside eesh. from the granny character, who granny is the owner of Sylvester and Tweety, sure, and she's got like you know old, she's drawn to have like old lady bosom, you know? sure, yeah. Uh, are there any other like female Looney Tunes? Uh, there is the witch who also makes a little cameo in this. Oh, very briefly, uh, and she's got some bosom. Yeah, but the, I mean, they're both like humanoid. Welcome back to We Hate Movies, where we rank cartoon tits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of better movies, Jessica Rabbit. Oh, am I right? Dude. <laughs> Again, humanoid cartoon. <laughs> this is a rabbit. But you go. Human... <laughs> you're getting another. You wait, you're saying Roger Rabbit, a rabbit can screw the humanoid, but we can't have a little bit of a mix. What if they had a baby? What if they named that baby Lola? Lola. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, shit, dude. After one crit... Here it is, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not... 
Roger's daughter. Oh. oh. One crazy night in Toontown. No. Bugs Bunny's walking drunk through the streets. There is Jessica Rabbit after a fight with Roger one oh. evening. I think there's something to this. I think, oh. oh my God. And then what happens? Space Jam happens and he hooks up with his own daughter. Oh my God. <laughs> and then the end of the movie after the credits, he blows his brains out. <laughs> it's That's like old all, boy. Folks. Yeah. It's like only old boy. <laughs> Old boy, you know what? Debbie Take- Duck pulled the strings the whole time. <laughs> Take note, Spike Lee. That's how you remake Old Boy <laughs> with beloved cartoon characters. Now go back and get it right. <laughs> and take but- Josh Brolin with you. But it's a, it's a, you know like I'm all for like hey look you look at the cast it's Michael Jordan and like it's Michael Jordan and a bunch of male cartoon characters you, you'd be like hey look. Maybe a girl wants to see this, which I totally agree with. Yeah. And, like, you know, you want to go in. You, new characters are always kind of tough with uh, an existing mythos such as this. The Poochie, you know. But the like Poochie the model. Poochie to model. bring in a female character is a great idea, but to, to sexualize her to this degree is exactly. insane. And she's only Bugs' girlfriend. She's, show, she's actually shown as being great at basketball. And like, yes. they have this thing where she's like, you know, I don't, I don't need no man to tell me how to do basketball, which is also great. It starts off all fine. And then she's just like, but I want to fuck Bugs Bunny. Like, well, you know, he had yeah, You know what, Lola? I mean, we all want to fuck Bugs Bunny. I get it. All right. You know, <laughs> yeah. Let's just let's just we, move past that. And okay. then fucking Elmer Fudd's heart breaks. <laughs> <laughs> all I wanted was a little kiss. <laughs> going to go and smell Kill Bugs' the shirt. <laughs> That's where it starts. Dude, that's a great cartoon. <laughs> Absolutely. As is the storied career of Looney Tunes on the whole until the, this is my question is Steve, you are a little more knowledgeable about Looney Tunes than I am, but was this the first like major Looney Tunes motion picture? I mean, they, they had, they'd released movies that in the past throughout the eighties that were essentially, and I think early nineties as well, that were essentially repackaged cartoons with, um, an overarching story of whatever, like clip shows essentially, but, Packaged into movies. Qu- Daffy Duck's Quackbusters is like this. Oh, Daffy right. Duck's Fantasy Island as well. And so, but these were theatrically released? I think at least some of them were. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I mean, because they're really blowing it with this big 90s debut. That's well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, it, it, it made sense because you couldn't really watch those aside from, you know, whatever. You know, you couldn't watch them aside from TV. So it's like, oh, cool. I get to watch these again right. in the big screen, et cetera. So we're playing basketball. We suck at basketball, but he's really trying his best. But to this movie's credit, it's like barely 80 minutes. So we're like instantly at the big game. Yeah. Was, right. There's a scene where they have to break into Michael's house to get his basketball gear. Oh, because he's dressed up with uh, for golf with yes. his hilarious pleated gray slacks. <laughs> and he's still got like golf cleats on and whatnot. They go in and it's Bugs and Daffy break into his house like the strangers. <laughs> Dude, if they had little like straw sacks over their heads, <laughs> perfect. Scare the shit out of these kids. They wake up all the kids while they're doing this. But also there's this dog. It's like a bulldog that like gives the business. Do you know who did the voice of that bulldog? Frank, uh, Welker. Frank Welker. Yeah. yeah. Are, you sh- <laughs> are you fucking shit? No, I'm not. I think this is like the theme of the podcast is connecting the Frank Welker dots throughout history. It's the Frank Welker conspiracy. Absolutely. And this is Frank Welker doing the voice of a real life dog. Just whatever. It's Michael Come Jordan's on. bulldog that he has. He's got this bulldog. I can't remember it having lines. It's just noises. No, it's just it's it's Frank Welker growling into a microphone for sixty thousand (laughs) dollars. The man has it figured out. And I mean, I think that they weren't going to hire him for this movie. And they're like, "Look, I just got a call from Frank. It's the voice actors union. They're like, look, (laughs) he's going to walk off forty projects tomorrow if he's not part of Space Jam. You got to figure it out. I don't know." There's like mafia involved in Frank yes. Welker's career. But here's the thing, dude. <laughs> he's because, like Frank. He's like Frank Sinatra. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but because Frank Welker is such an amazingly talented voice actor, he's just voicing all these union representatives. <laughs> There's no people calling the oh Space Jam God. offices. It's all Frank Welker. It's such a house of cards he's built himself. <laughs> an intricate web of lies. Oh, you better hire Frank Welker. Or they're going to kill me. Takes the phone. Yeah, that's right. We're going to kill him. (laughs) (laughs) Calm down, Rocco the dog. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh no, a dinosaur! <laughs> Hire him quick! That's right, Frank Welka will be hired, or else <laughs> the devil from Spawn is going to get you. <laughs> Oh, no, the devil was fun. We better hire him. <laughs> Man, that's a shitty animated devil. Speaking of shitty animation, they get all these materials from Michael Jordan's trophy room. You know, the, uh, the, his, like, suburban... Like, it was like... A, these are, like, where a suburban dad would put his bowling trophies. <laughs> Not the greatest basketball player ever c- keeping his accolades. Uh, yeah, including Olympic gold medals <laughs> all over the place, you know. And he's got, like... I don't know. Are they supposed to be magic shoes in this movie? It's Michael Jordan, well, so he doesn't need magic shoes. He's the magic. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah, that's true. Huh? How are you not in some way or another getting Magic Johnson in for some oh, sort of Oh, no, we, were, we weren't okay with that yet. Oh, we, oh, right. Oh, I'm sorry, 1996. Yeah, it was just like, yeah. oh, my Magic Johnson. Oh, I'm so sad for that man. <laughs> so, oh, I'm, so, I'm just, just so sad for that man. Then Jack Warner is down in hell like, I can't wait to see ya! <laughs> but he had enough money to beat everything. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so they break in, they steal all this stuff, and they're like, see, Michael, now you can get dressed to play basketball with us. <laughs> they foil this dog, and the thing about this dog, by the way, they're doing, like, some green screen on this dog that is wretched. Oh, yeah. Because there's a part where the dog's, like, kind of chasing them around the room. The kids come in like, get out of here, Scruffy, or whatever, you know. And the dog, like, turns around like, you know. That's a Frank Welker. That's a Frank Welker. Uh, Cha-ching right there. Yep, that's fucking (laughs) $60,000. And (laughs) I noticed, like, the shot is this dog turning around like, but then you look at the background. And they've green screened in a shot of this living room, but the proportions are so off. The dog is bigger than this fireplace. <laughs> How do you fuck that up? I mean, the animation, the green screen, everything technical about this movie is really subpar. And the lighting is really bad. Like the the computer shading of all the characters, like the shadows, right? Doesn't try make. To- Try to blend them in with an actual Michael Jordan. <laughs> and it just does not work. It does not. Um, Why are they called Monstars? Well, because they're monsters and stars. Uh, or, well, oh, maybe they're monsters. Is it like monsters and all stars? Yeah. Shouldn't Jesus, they, that's stupid. They should be called morons. <laughs> yeah, the morons, because they're the moron mountain. Oh, right. Or the ma- mountaineers, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're the bears. Oh, okay. Sure. There aren't any bears in the NBA. Why not? So the weird thing about this scene where they take his his shoes and his shorts and whatever yeah, is like later in the movie, they make him a human basketball costume branded with the Toons logo. Right. So it's like, who's sewing human fabric in Toontown? Yeah. I mean, I presume that Granny's making all the costumes for the cartoons. Sure. But does Granny have real life material? <laughs> To make a basketball jersey for a human being. And I think in there lies a little bit of the problem. Because if you're thinking about it logically, mm. Michael Jordan needs to have a green screen jersey on and yes. you make it a cartoon. Yep. And that's right. kind of cool. Sure. He's wearing a cartoon piece of clothing. That would be kind of cool. Right? Like, that's just do that. Just, you know what? Just do that. Also, Michael Jordan would be dead by now because in this movie, <laughs> one of the monsters grabs him and turns him into a basketball. Oh, that's yeah. a Tim Burton nightmare right there. <laughs> oh, my God. He just crushes every little bone and it's just like, Krush. oh, my God. He's just, he's ruined. And that's an interesting thing. Because they dribble him. <laughs> they're dribbling that man. Officer, they're dribbling that man. <laughs> But, like, when Bob Hoskins goes to Toontown... Yeah. He can get killed. Yeah. You can get straight up dead on the streets of Toontown, right? But in this movie, yeah. He's turned into a little basketball. His face is all stretched out. It's terrifying. Then you have... Uh, when he's trying to do, he's doing a, you know, Air Jordan dunk. Yeah. And he's jumping on the Monstars' heads. And they grab him. And his arm starts armstronging yeah. and stretches to make the dunk. That's disgusting. But it's weird because he gets turned into a basketball and bounced around. Right. And then, like, he shakes it off. And in his Michael Jordan killer del- delivery, he's like, wow, that was weird. You know? And, like, <laughs> the weird thing about that is later in the movie, Bugs Bunny is like, yeah, it's it's a Toontown. Anything can happen. And he's like, 
oh, thanks for telling me now, Bugs, right when the game's about to end. I'm like, dude, you were turned into a fucking basketball. Yeah. What, do you remember that? I nope. mean, maybe the trauma was such. Yeah. You just that's... wipe that. <laughs> <laughs> you just wipe that shit from your mind. Right? I mean, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like, you know what movie? Like, you want to get to 90 minutes? How about a scene where it's like, yeah, hey, welcome to Toontown, Doc. And it's like, this is shit that can happen to you. Sure. A fucking anvil falls on Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? Why not? Yeah, a bunch of Nazi scientists made Toontown in the center of the <laughs> earth 60 years ago. <laughs> Dude, I would love it if, if cartoons like were a product of Nazi science. <laughs> Hitler was trying to get an edge in the war, so he dropped the ark down here, and somehow Toontown existed. Decided to use American cartoons against him in his propaganda effort. <laughs> we were all ass sleeper agents, Doc. <laughs> Now we're doomed to repeat our cartoons for eternity. <laughs> like, get Michael Jordan involved in classic Looney Tunes situations. Yeah, sure, and right? get Joseph Goebbels involved in classic <laughs> Looney Tunes situations. So we're playing basketball. It's Everyone's the big, it's the big game. The big right? game. Everyone's getting their ass kicked by the monsters. Is this when we, this when we hear the Space Jam song? Or oh, Space so- Jam. Take your chance, do your dance at the Space Jam. Jam. Yeah, yeah, oh, top man. that. <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting their ass kicked mainly because, and Steve, you have the the answer to this. Sure, but mainly because they've got a really weak starting five. Well, it's all because it's like, oh, who's the most popular? You yep. can't do it from popularity sake. Can't be a nope. popularity contest. This is a a chance between light a game. With slavery on the line, okay? Yeah. So, like, we got to get our best and brightest out there. I love that Tweety Bird's on all sorts of tank tops you see at water parks. <laughs> but guess what? Tweety Bird <laughs> is terrible at basketball. Sit him down. He's not as big as a basketball, <laughs> so he shouldn't be anywhere near this match. It's stupid to even consider him. Of course it is. You know what he can do? Take his little bird feet, pick up a thing of water, and fly it out to Michael Jordan. Yes, exactly. There you go, Tweety. You're helping the cause. My top, my my starting five, if Absolutely. I had to. Absolutely. Which I, I spent a lot of time thinking about. <laughs> There's a lot of, like, names crossed out, question marks, torn up pieces of paper. You probably want Wile E. Coyote as point guard, right? Yes. You know, He's athletic. He's he's live. He can scrappy. He can get all over the court when you need him to. Exactly. You get ru- road runner. You know, maybe he's another. You know, road. Ru- that's a natural. They need road runner on this team, and they don't. I don't think he is. Yeah, exactly. A fast break with road runner. Oh my God. Yep. Things- he gets it to the. He gets it right outside the hoop. You get, Mike's right there waiting to do it. Man. Oh exactly. yeah, the assist level. Yeah, road runner probably be, actually would would be the point guard. The assist level would be. Uh, off the charts. You want him to be able to do those sweet breakaway layups. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he's down to the basket before the rest of them can cross the half point line. Exactly. You have the big red monster as the center because he's big. He's imposing. And yeah. he can fucking mix it up with the monsters. Hello? Exactly. Yeah. And, that, and that's where you're using your noodle. <laughs> you're, you're digging into that Looney Tunes cast and you're saying, how can I help these guys <laughs> not become slaves for eternity? Exactly. The answer is the big red monster that nobody gives a shit about. <laughs> You're not seeing him on a tank top at a water park, but he's helping you in the paint. You might see, you might see him on a white as a white trash tattoo. I'm just saying it's entirely possible. They're all white trash tattoos. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, the the red monster's probably like, and this is um, this is my girlfriend uh, Julia tattoo. <laughs> they they kind of got it wrong. <laughs> she was, she now was, I just said, you know what? Just keep, keep putting hair on there. <laughs> Man, let me tell you something. If you get a tattoo that every time you show somebody, you have to say they kind of got it wrong, <laughs> get it either touched up or taken yeah, off. Yeah, that's why you touch it up to be a Looney Tune. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted this to be my kid's name, but they misspelled it, so it's Tweety Bird now. <laughs> you get Big Fat Foghorn Leghorn as the power forward. You know, yep. he's... He's bouncing butts with everybody, bouncing people out of bounds. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. you know, and just you need to box somebody out. Get Froghorn on the court, exactly. And you know what? He's doing a lot of racist ta- trash talk. Also, absolutely, get right in your head, big time. He <laughs> and it's a- like, he's a lot of mumbling too with that accent. It's like, what the fuck did you say? He's like, I what, I what, I what, I wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, did you say who's your center? <laughs> 
Oh, uh, no, the, the big red monster. Oh, he's the center? Okay. Yes, and uh, I think... Yeah, that's it. And then, you, of course, if you have Michael Jordan, you would keep Michael Jordan I mean, in the yeah, game. You're, you're going to use Michael Jordan. You're going to keep Michael Jordan, <laughs> yes, for sure. But, yeah, I, you want... The big red monster makes the most sense because you're fucking hurting... You're hurting the monsters. Oh, yeah. The monsters. Yeah, excuse me. They're monster all-stars. So they're <laughs> monsters. <laughs> The hey first, now, you're a monster. Get your game on. Go play some cartoon basketball. Oh, Thank yeah. God Smash Mouth didn't exist yet. Yeah, it, we, we dodged it by like a year, man. It was really fucking close. They would have been slathered all over this soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> like those Shrek movies, man. They were covering oh, all the hits. God, that, aren't they all over garbage. that fucking Mystery Men soundtrack? They are, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, they were everywhere. Poisoning soundtracks all over the Sunset Strip. The first half goes without incident. I I'd think like to smash their mouth. <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> hey yo. <laughs> hey yo. I'll do my own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get you a soundboard so you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Please. It's gonna be the only soundboard we've ever used. It's just gonna be that. <laughs> um the first pa- half happens. I think they score like two points because they have this really terribly put together roster. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Wayne Knight goes to spy on the Monstars in their locker room. Yes. To which Danny DeVito's like, you're doing great. Keep doing great. You know, yeah. it's just like we did everything. He finds out that, oh, my God, they have stolen the NBA's talent. Oh, yes. Wayne Knight gets the scoop, which it's like. I you know I guess it's like the the cliche of every villain who has a plan, but it's like all the dudes in that room know what they did. Why would they, <laughs> like why is Danny DeVito like it's so great we stole the talent from all those NBA players? And it's just like Wayne Knight's like just say what as he hides in a locker. Now is this is it at the end of the first half where we have like this pan down the bench and there it looks like a battlefield and they're all fucked up. But that's at the end of the game when Bill Murray comes in. Oh, okay, because that's there's a really uh, terrifying thing I, think, to, I want to get to in there. I think this is around the time where now the good team locker room has heard about these allegations. Yes. <laughs> Wayne Knight comes back after being brutalized by the Monstars, but they some for some reason let him go. Yeah, and he goes back into the locker room. He looks like they just like put him over a grill. He's there, all charbroiled. There was one more uh, monster that stole Ron Artest's talent and beat the <laughs> shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> but th- this is where Bugs Bunny gets the idea of. Oh, all right, so Michael Jordan's pep talk is garbage and not working. <laughs> yeah. I, that makes me think, you know, was he having to say shit in the locker room? Because, Jesus, how are you inspiring championship teams with this kind of acting? I think it's usually like, stop fucking this up for me. <laughs> this, <laughs> I'm doing everything out there. Stop fucking oh, it up. Oh, sorry, for me. Mike. He's got a but, tattoo on his back where he would just take off his jersey and point to it because it disgusted him to talk to his own teammates. Was it the Big Red Monster? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it, they tried to do the Big Red Monster, but they <laughs> fucked it up, so they just reworked it, so it said, stop fucking this up for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bugs Bunny comes up with the idea of uh, tricking all of his teammates into thinking they're using steroids sure. in order to win the rest of the game. It's Michael Jordan's secret stuff <laughs> it's a water bottle he writes on michael jordan's secret stuff yeah and it's just water but everyone's chugging it and they think they're getting powerful because they're cartoons <laughs> and i for, i think it was i forget well who's the holdout was it daffy or something yeah daffy's the one and then and then uh, oh no sylvester i think maybe yeah and then uh, my my Michael Jordan or someone's like, well, you want to win, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it's like, you better fucking drink the serum. Yeah. I got 20 grand on this game. He's got, <laughs> he's got a side bet going with DeVito. <laughs> Hard cash. <laughs> Absolutely. There's also in this scene again, Lola Bunny, who's got like six lines. One of which is when Bugs Bunny drinks his secret stuff. He turns into a big hulking monster because he's a cartoon and his physiology doesn't mean anything. He looks like a fucking Mr. Universe contestant. And she's like, oh, my God, that bunny. And they they do the sexy sack. They do a little bit of a saxophone in my Looney Tunes movie. Just a little bit. Which I don't need. It's just, just enough to make kids curious. Tickle it with sexuality. <laughs> Just tickle it a little bit. Yeah, you know what? You don't sprinkle sexuality. You tickle a little sexuality in there. That's right. But it's just so unnecessary. It's like, you know, she's just like, ah. You're like, not now. It's (laughs) halftime. 
We're about to become slaves. We're down. They were down like 40 points. <laughs> totally. They're getting blown out. And then they realize, oh, we're cartoons. We could do cartoon things. This is bullshit. They, where, like, Bugs Bunny turns into a delivery man. He's on a Vespa. He throws it to Michael Jordan. They score some points. There's only slam dunks in this movie. Yep, I'm only sorry, slam dunks. But holding a basketball on a Vespa is traveling. <laughs> <laughs> but well, you, you Marvin know, the Martian is the ref. He calls it nothing. Yeah, you know, good, good on him, you know, because it's, I guess you... He's on the side of freedom, I suppose. He wants to just let this shit play out. Like, he's I'm not going to blow a bunch of whistles. He is kind of <laughs> impartial because he's also an alien. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know where outer space is in relation to Looney Tune Town because it's underground. Yeah. Does he go out into the space space where the monsters are Oh, from? I see what you're right? saying. I mean, well, that's confusing, right? Because he's a Martian. He's from Mars. Yeah. But is it the Mars of, like... If you're down in Looney Tune Town, it's there's a, a sky, a moon, and a sun. Right. Are you? Right. Do you have to go up to that space to get to Marvin's Mars? I think it might be. It's like an alternate dimension space. Yeah. yeah. And the the Monstars and Moron Mountain is obviously from our own universe. <laughs> <laughs> right. Obviously. I guess. Oh, their villain. What... Their villain sounds like Earthbound actor Danny DeVito. You know. <laughs> that could be a good uh, Weird Al Bruce Springsteen parody song. Down in Looney Tune Town. Get a Lucky Town parody in there. Yeah. I can see it happening. Sure, he'll do that. So, oh, the other one that's a bu- <laughs> the other one that's a bunch of bullshit because we're only doing slam dunks is one of the monsters goes to do a slam dunk, and only in the second half of this game does uh, Wiley e. Coyote think to wire the basketboard with a bunch of TNT. Yep, you know, and I'm like, why are we just remembering in the second half of this game that we're cartoons? And it's it's to your point earlier, like weird hearing these guys talk to each other like they're pals. It's like Bugs Bunny's like, "Great job, Wiley Coyote," and I'm like, "Shut the fuck up!" I hate that. I hate it. Mm. I hate it so much. Like, imagine in Roger Rabbit when, like, you know, you see like Mickey interacting with them. Oh, how you doing there, Bugs Bunny? <laughs> no way, dude. They're just looking like I see you, motherfucker. <laughs> I get it. You stay to the opposite side of the street. Yeah. Hey, 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 what's up, Goofy? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, <laughs> yuck. <laughs> this is Disney Town. <laughs> it's like the blood in the crypts, man. Yeah. They start absolutely. going at it. Absolutely, mm-hmm. dude. Absolutely. <laughs> so did you guys know that a popular movie came out two years before this? Oh, no. What, what, what was that called? It was called Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. Oh, man. Fuck this part. You know who loves Pulp Fiction at this time? 12-year-old. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and cartoon characters apparently. <laughs> it's it's uh, Elmer Fudd and Yosemite Sam, and they they play the riff from Pulp Fiction, and they're dressed in the black suits, and they shoot up people, and it's like, yay! And it's like five seconds less than. Yeah, it's like why have it in here? <laughs> like why have it? In here? I mean, and this is if you're trying to think like, well, we're just trying to have fun for the parents too. Like the parents don't give a fuck. If anything, that would annoy me more. We're 79 minutes into an 87-minute movie, and you're throwing out a Pulp Fiction reference? This is like Shrek again yes. to bring up a big offender, doing <laughs> doing the Macarena yes. in that first movie. After it was like five years gone. Way more than five years, dude. I'm sorry, dude, man. That Those movies are trash. <laughs> the, the, Sh- the Shrek movies? Yes. Yeah, wall-to-wall yeah, wall trash. Yeah. Wall-to-wall I know trash. Everyone, I know we're going to get hate mail now, but I'm sorry to break it to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's trash. I checked out after that second one. I was like, you can fucking keep it. And all your Halloween donkey adventures and Shrek's magical Christmas horse shit. And Mike, I don't care. Donkey? Mike Myers <laughs> Mike Myers found fucking Chris Farley's voice performance in the garbage and was like, yeah. oh, well, he's dead. Yeah. I could do a basketball. <laughs> Ish character that I gave. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> Shrek. <laughs> and he, again, and Pepe Le Pew is like stinking up the joint, and all the monsters pass out because he smells like shit so bad, right? <laughs> and he's just like, oh, I could just go out to the basket and score points. And by the way, the way he does that is the ball's like right on the rim and he <laughs> kisses it and it falls in. Gross. Why would he kiss it? It doesn't look like a skunk. Why don't you do that the whole game? Like, oh, that worked. Let's keep doing that. You know what? Hey, same. Uh, 
Yosemite Sam and Elmer Fudd, you keep shooting them with guns. Yeah. We're going to, because that, Marvin the Martian's not going to blow a whistle. You no. keep shooting them with guns. Peppy, you stay over there and stink it up. Yeah, and hey, Michael, Peppy, how much stink juice you got in that smell sack? <laughs> then we're gonna Start have, spraying. And then we're going to have Michael Jordan fucking just put on a Harlem Globetrotter show for a while. <laughs> Run up the score a bit. Dude, honestly, that's a better movie. <laughs> Don't kidnap Michael Jordan. Kidnap the goddamn oh, Harlem yeah. Globetrotters. Because that's a theme song I can get behind. <laughs> yeah. So I think this is where, like, they've been playing hard. They're right. coming back a bit. Yeah. Right. But they are run ragged. And mm-hmm. we get, th- this is where we get this pan of, like, what's happened to all of them, right? And the two that really stand out are the little vulture character, whatever his name is, or yeah. eagle or whatever. Yeah, he's, a- he's in, like, a complete mummy rap. <laughs> and then you have what's a horrifying image is... You go by and there's like a roast chicken with a knife in it on a platter and it's steaming. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's Foghorn Leghorn just (laughs) cooking on that bench. They killed him. (laughs) One of the monsters needs to be eating him, by the way. You also get Tweety Bird in an iron lung. (laughs) Oh, yeah, the Acme iron lung. Acme, so you know it doesn't work. So you know he's (laughs) dead, too. A lot of Acme iron lungs in that hospice. <laughs> but can we, it's a real snippet. When the one of the Monstars gets his pants pulled down oh, man. and you get to see his big orange man ass. <laughs> Dude, let me tell There's you something. There's a difference between a, an ass that's drawn for a cartoon yeah. and the ass of a man that is drawn to be orange. And let me tell you two things that really man up this alien ass we're looking at. One... There's like pimples and hair all over it. Yeah. And two, some animator <laughs> in South Korea sure. spent like six weeks perfecting the jiggle motion yes, for exactly. this monster's <laughs> butt cheeks. For what <laughs> and for whom? I don't know, man. And it's not the last <sighs> time because then, like, obviously, we're just getting pictures through all the credits yeah. to keep kids entertained <laughs> until the lights come out. You get that big, juicy ass a second time. It's like, my God in heaven, this monster's ass is not the ass of a cartoon. Look, I got kids here. I knew that you were going to try and get them on McDonald's and <laughs> to make them pre-diabetic. But I, I will not stand for this blatant sexuality in my Looney Tunes movie. So we're down to the wire. All the Looney Tunes are hit. So let's get Wayne Knight in the thing. And Wayne Knight gets crushed. And this is one of, oh this is God. like, I don't know what this is from. It's sheer terror. He gets it's flattened like a Edgar Allan Poe's nightmare. He gets flattened like a pancake. And then some medics come in and blow him up. It's, it's, it's a classic cartoon trope. Flattened like a pancake. What do you do? You blow him at the, Filled with hot air, they turn into a balloon and fart around, and then that's the end of it. Except it's Newman from Seinfeld! And he's made to look like a person through bad CG, and looks like claymation, too. I mean, there's all sorts of things trying to make this fly, and it's disgusting, and he just kind of, like, falls back down on the gurney, and they shuffle him out. And And he's farting, too. He's notably farting. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's just big, juicy farts all over the place. And then, so in comes Bill Murray to save the day. And he just, there's some stupid thing where one of the cartoons is like, no offense, but how the hell did you get in here? Yeah. And it's just some joke. Oh, I'm friends with the producer. Because Ivan Reitman produced it. Obviously. Right, 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 right. It's Daffy Duck, by the way. Oh, yes, you're right. It is Daffy. And even Daffy's like, that's fucking stupid. He's like, that's a stupid joke, Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, he, I mean, he plays, he plays terribly. Uh, and I think, I mean, it's it's Michael Jordan that wins the game for them, right? That's when the arm stretch happens. Yeah, yeah he pulls it? the Reed Richards and he wins. <laughs> and uh, that's it. Like, basically, Danny DeVito is like, well, I'm going to take everybody anyway. And then the monsters realize that they're built like big A dudes. Brick shit shithouse. And they beat realistic cr- butt cheeks. <laughs> They've got real man asses now, so they can really <laughs> fuck them up. And they beat him up and send him to space. Did we mention that Michael Jordan decided to, like, up the bat. Oh, right, because he's a terrible degenerate gambler. <laughs> right. In the real world and in the cartoon world. He's gambling in Space Jam. <laughs> what does that tell you about his gambling problem? He found a way to gamble in Space Jam. So, Eric, what is he doing to up the ante here? It's like, um, 
God, I forget what what happens if he wins. Well, if he no, that's right. If he wins, the monsters have to give. He finds out that the monsters stole the NBA talent. Oh, so right, like, right. If I win, I get all the talent back to give oh, back to my yes. my basketball but friends. You, in quotes. Yeah, but if <laughs> you win, I'll be a slave too. Okay, Michael yeah. Jordan, whatever. And then we have this animated sequence with Michael Jordan in chains, which I'm not a big fan of at all. It looks like it's animated by Todd McFarlane. <laughs> it does. Speaking of Spawn. It's like yeah. Michael Jordan, he's like chained to the floor, sitting at a desk, and Danny DeVito is like, and you're going to sign autographs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you're like, what do these fucking aliens <laughs> at Moron Mountain care about Michael Jordan? This doesn't make any sense. Maybe they get all those uh, McDonald's commercials. If they get Looney Tunes, oh yeah, maybe they're getting those McDonald's commercials too. I mean, it's just like the balls of Michael Jordan to be like, of course I'm popular all over the galaxy. <laughs> Why not? It's the audacity. It's that same audacity that made him think it was okay to have the Hitler mustache. <laughs> God oh, who, damn. Oh, who else had this mustache? Whatever. <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, none of, none of that comes to pass except for the Hitler mustache. <laughs> Danny it's DeVito. It's foretold in this movie. <laughs> the space spot of Danny DeVito is beaten into oblivion <laughs> and dragged away or whatever. And then the Monstars are like, okay, I guess it was fucked up. We'll give you back the NBA talent. Sure. And they then trying to set up a backdoor pilot, by the way, because Space Jam will be so popular, we're bringing it to TV. The Monstars, when they give up the talent, they turn back into little, you know, nugget dudes. Yeah. And they're like, gee, we don't want to go back and live with Danny DeVito. Do you think we could live here in Looney Tune Town? And they're like, sure, come be a Looney Tune. And you're like, oh, 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 oh. oh I don't want to see the Monstars on another Looney Tune cartoon. No, no way. I barely wanted to see them excrete magic into a basketball. <laughs> but they did it. Yeah, it is that like same gelatinous weird substance. Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's called bizarre. magic. <laughs> hey, look, it's ma they're oozing magic. Johnson. <laughs> So Michael Jordan takes this basketball and the, the Looney Tunes yep. are like unceremoniously out of this movie. Yep. They say uh, Lola and Bugs kiss and he goes, oh boy. And that's the end of the movie. Yeah. And so we go back and he finds all of these basketball players hanging out in some YMCA gymnasium, like lamenting that they can't play basketball anymore. And then like Michael Jordan walks in and the five of them are like, oh, fucking great. Now who, look who walked in. When, I'm sorry. There is the earth shattering revelation. Michael Jordan has to get to his baseball game. That's the thing. Like, oh, oh, this Wayne, is ridiculous. Wayne Knight is like, oh my God, we have to go to this minor league baseball game. My boss is going to fire me. You really need to do this. He's like, All right. Well, he takes the Monstars spaceship. Yes. Lands it. You know, he could have landed it in the park. Absolutely. He could have landed it a block away. A field of some kind. Could have done a Back to the Future. Let me just push this behind a couple of trees and then come out. <laughs> yeah. The no. smart way. He lands on the field. Yes. And has Wayne Knight come out first. He, he demands Wayne Knight come out first. <sighs> he certainly does. And Wayne Knight's like, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Jordan. Q.R. Kelly and my simultaneous vomiting. And, um, I don't know, Mulder and Scully, the SWAT team. Yes. <laughs> Michael, he's Michael Jordan just arrived in a UFO. The game yeah. is not happening. Yeah, your game is canceled. Michael for sure. Jordan is going under the knife tonight. Yeah. Like game canceled due to first contact. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Due to alien autopsy. <laughs> Oh, well, that's why he was so good at basketball. He's an alien the whole time. Yeah, that's what would happen. <laughs> yes. Every, you, the media would get that their, their teeth sunk in that idea. Oh, yeah, They'd dude. never let go. And this baseball stadium is woo-hooing and hee-hawing instead of pants shitting. And yeah. you're just oh like, God. come on. Everyone's pants would shit. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, now, like, I'm talking about a two-legger, man. <laughs> Not only are there aliens, but one of them is fucking Michael Jordan. Also, the funny thing is the game won't start because Michael Jordan isn't there. Yeah. Everyone's chanting, we right. want Michael. Like, it's a concert. It's a baseball <laughs> game. He's not there. He's on the fucking DNR list. Yep. D DNP list. Not the do that resuscitate. <laughs> Did not play list. He's but, probably on the DNR list as well. <laughs> Wayne Knight's on a DNR list. Also, the game's not happening until Michael Jordan moves his fucking spaceship. <laughs> You 
mind lifting off? You parked right on the mound. <laughs> By the way, our starting pitcher's dead. <laughs> crushed under your cartoon spaceship and by the way that's a cartoon michael jordan what's happening Dude, what the fuck is going on like I, oh our coach had a heart attack we have to stop the game because he saw that thing <laughs> he's an old guy an old fat guy who drinks beer every day so yeah i guess they play that baseball game deleted scene yep you know and you would think right there has to be a scene where michael jordan hits a home run no nope. how do you you know that must have been, he watched the final cut like um so it was pretty good, but uh, I noticed the, the the home run scene, the whole home run sequence. I believe. It was, what do you call it when it's like four? It, it's a grand slam. Where'd that go? They're like, yeah, uh, I believe my baseball was supposed to fly out to all the way into space <laughs> and hit Moron Mountain, and it was supposed to look something like Alderaan. <laughs> no, it's, it's, you bet Larry Bird twenty bucks is like. See all that basketball, baseball stuff in this movie? At the end of the movie, I bet you I don't hit a home run. And Lyford's <laughs> like, oh, Michael, you're about to lose a lot of money. And then he went to Warner Brothers and had the scene cut. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, so then we're going to this YMCA gym. They're like, oh, great. We so, hate you, too. But they're just sitting around, like, just being like, oh, well, I guess we, we're not rich and power. You know what I mean? Like, And it's so insane that it's like you're not just benched. You're just like banned from the NBA. <laughs> We're closing the whole league because five dudes from different teams yeah. just got shitty all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, if that happened every time an athlete went cold, we'd never have sports. <laughs> exactly. It's not like they, they, they're dead or like yeah. they're in comas or mysterious comas or something. Yeah. They're just not good for a while. Yeah. <laughs> And so he's like, just everybody touch this ball. Don't worry about it. And then because, hi, everybody, I'm Michael Jordan here to save the NBA. Yeah. Again. Yeah, the messiah of basketball. <laughs> did anybody miss me? Yeah. And then speaking of did anybody miss me, like they get all their powers back. And, you know, they did because they all slam dunk except for Muggsy Bugs. <laughs> and you're, you're like, OK, great. And then it's the return of Michael Jordan to the Bulls. And it's just like him oh. going back out on the court. Everybody's shit in pants. Well, because they, they they ride him a little bit like Patrick Ewing's like, yeah, Mr. Baseball doesn't want to play basketball anymore. He's like, you don't think. And then <laughs> we cut to that. Yeah. No and, Scotty uh, Pippen. Nope. We do get treated to Larry Bird and Bill Murray in the stands. Yeah. Oh, yep. man. A little bit of ba bird banter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we're a bird, out of there. A bird would do better than Larry Bird. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather watch Bill Murray and a pigeon and that scene <laughs> Larry Bird. It just kills me that I don't get to see Larry Bird do like one layup. Yeah, or, or take on. a three-pointer. Come on. Just one. Just let him play basketball. He does it in blue chips. That's Oh, yeah, that's right. There's that like backyard scene where he's taking some shots. Yeah. <laughs> Ah oh, man, and then and 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 that's it. It's just a photo montage. We're Space Jam songing all over the place. Yeah. You, I believe, I could fly again for the <laughs> third time in one seventy-minute presentation. It's like I believe I can fly. Basketball Jones, the the Space Jam theme song itself, "Fly Like an Eagle." Yep, by I don't remember who sang that song. Well, I know, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a cover, right? Uh, it was Steve Miller, band, right? I yeah, yeah, I don't know who's doing this, the, the, like the R and beat up cover, but I mean, yeah, it's just like remember all the dumb moments that happened in this movie. Now here's some stills while the credits run, and Yeesh. of course, you know, we get a little "That's all, folks." Oh yeah, at cool. the end of it, because yeah. because you know, yeah, oh right, yeah, Looney Tunes, they were in this movie, right? Yeah, <laughs> shove them at the end of the credits when kids are long gone from the theater. <laughs> by the way, and doesn't Michael Jordan have like a line there, like? Can I go home now? Oh, yeah, he does do that. Yeah. <sighs> Mercy. Well, because yeah. Porky Pig is, ha, can't get the last word at a Michael Jordan movie. <laughs> He's, Porky Pig was really dis diminished in this film. Yeah, I agree. I didn't appreciate that. Nope. It's just like they treat him in the cartoons sometimes. It's, he's just a pushover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would anybody recommend Space Jam for someone who may not have seen it? I don't think so. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like, go to that website. That's a lot of fun. That's the funniest thing ever. That's nothing a, on the internet dies. No, that's about it. I mean, there's nothing really funny or fun or cool <laughs> about it. Like, I, I do kind of like it because I, I do love this era of basketball. And I like seeing, like, Patrick Ewing and, like, Charles Barkley in his prime, even for four seconds. It's yeah. kind of fun. But that's about it. I would recommend it only for residents of Washington or Colorado. Okay. <laughs> um, but that's about it, I guess. Why, why those states, Eric? Um, I just think that 
they they might be interested in basketball. You say the law might be bent in their favor. So I, they can enjoy this I movie. Well, I think he means you know, what? especially Washington. Yeah, you're missing the Supersonics. Yeah, you want a little basketball. In oh, your okay, yeah. got it, got it. Got and it. Colorado, I mean, what are you? The Nuggets? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I would not recommend this. You know, like watch Blue Chips and then watch. Duck amok and other assorted shorts. <laughs> Put on ESPN Classic. Yeah, <laughs> like if you if you really want to. Yeah, watch Jordan play basketball. Watch Larry Bird get to play some basketball. Watch for Christ's sake. Bugs Bunny not want to have sex. <laughs> yeah, a- exactly right. Watch Looney Tunes void of the temptation of sexual intercourse. Oh, you know I'll you know I'll take Tex Avery's wolf over uh, this, this this Lola business I I also just think that there hasn't been and again prove me wrong with this new series there hasn't been a relevant Looney Tunes moment since Mel Blanc died that's, yeah. that's it that's really it and I mean even the 70s were a bit rough with some of those Speedy Gonzalez cartoons and stuff yeah. like that Speedy Gonzalez in general is a rough <laughs> character I mean notice how he's absent from this movie in 1996 well people realized oh we can't do that like yep. you know what and we shouldn't be able to do that <laughs> Yeah, I was, you know, because I haven't seen that Steve Martin movie. What is yeah. it? Looney Tunes Back in Action? Back in Action, yes. I would have to wager, though, just because Michael Jordan's not in it, it might be a better movie. Yeah, yeah it would know. almost have to be. Yeah. Is Steve Martin playing a secret know. cartoon? Is he like a Christopher Lloyd judge? Well, he seems he's the bad guy, and he's out to get him some Looney Tunes, I think. <laughs> he's going to gobble up those Looney Tunes for some reason. And noted actor Brendan Fraser is there to just <laughs> be there. <laughs> That's Space Jam from 1996, directed by Joe Pitka. If you want more information about We Hate Movies, check out our website, whmpodcast.com. Check out the other shows on our network. Visit sideshownetwork.tv. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We're at WHM Podcast. And write into the mailbag. We all hate movies at gmail.com. We got another mailbag episode, uh, I think maybe airing this week. Uh, check around either Thursday or Friday. We'll figure it out. We got to do, we've got, it's May. So we've animation damnations around the corner mailbag. We got to get to it, you know, more bonus content from we hate movies. And you know, uh, I'm sure you've got a good space jam story. Everybody saw this in theaters. Let's hear it. Yep. And oh, and by the way, you know, if you, if you didn't notice, cause it dropped like a couple Fridays ago, uh, we had Gilbert Gottfried on the show. We had a great talk with him. Check that out. It's on the main feed, you know, WHM interview, Gilbert Gottfried, uh, we had a blast with Gilbert, so check that out if you missed it. So clue for next week's episode, and may I say, get the hashtags ready, everybody. SBE 2015. Holy shit. Starting next week, the summer blockbuster yeah. extravaganza is back, which of course means it is the lead up to our season finale. But we have a cavalcade of big budget ridiculous movies to get to before then. Uh, so how do we want to clue this next one? There's several ways you can do it. Uh, mm, mm. Can we say Jeff Goldblum? I think we can. Yeah, I think I think we can say Jeff Goldblum and let everybody know what that movie is. <laughs> so next week, a big budget movie starring Jeff Goldblum. Until then, I'm Andrew Jupin. Eric Siska. Steven Sadak. Take it easy. <laughs>